Muckle Chapter 10, Part 5, in which we talk about European feudal society, especially primogeniture. So the law here is that um, if you are if you own this uh, 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 royal own land, right? You you don't technically own it. Um, you're just uh, in control of it for the king. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for all intents and purposes, you you own you know ten thousand acres of prime real estate in Surrey or whatever. Um, and uh, you're an earl, and you have uh, four sons. Um, you have to give it all to your oldest son. Uh, and your three younger sons and your three daughters are out without any land at all. Now, over the course of your lifetime, uh, you could have in, had some investments, you could have had some income, you could have uh, you could have a, a pile of cash, and you can split up that cash. Um, but the land is what gives people um, annual rent, that gives them money to live off of. And so basically, all of those others, they can't really uh, get married, um, the, the younger sons, because they can't provide for family. So they have to figure out something to do. Um, why do we do this? Why do we uh, hold um, land in uh, 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 primogenitor? Uh, let's say we have a, a plot here. I'm going to um, <clears throat> give you a plot of land here. Let's make it big so I can see it myself. There we go. So we got our plot of land here. Bring it a little bit closer uh, with our castle. And the man has four sons, the Duke of, of so-and-so. He's got the four sons, and he has to give it all to the oldest son instead of splitting it up. What would happen if he split it up uh, into four equal parts uh, and gave uh, each son a, 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 a quarter of the land? Uh, and then um, the old, the, uh, one of the sons has four sons himself, and he builds his own little castle on his still sizable, you know, several thousand acres worth of land with all of its uh, property there. Um, and he has four sons, and the, the, one of his younger sons um, takes his land, builds a castle, has four sons, and keeps splitting it up. Uh, pretty soon, uh, it's no longer a sizable piece of land. It's no longer a big castle. Um, now it's just a house. Sorry, we're running out of out of land here. Uh, but now it's just a house on a on a on a modest plot of a, a couple hundred acres, um, and you no longer have uh, a single duke uh, controlling uh, thousands of acres with uh, the hatred of all of these people depending on him. Right? You know, you've got a, a duke up there in a huge castle, and he's got an army of several thousand troops. Uh, and yes, everyone hates him, and he's cruel and, and mean, uh, but he's got all those thousands of troops to defend him, uh, so nobody can really rise up. Uh, and if the if the people do rise up, the queen or the king back in the capital says, Duke so-and-so, take care of your people, and he does it. Uh, just one order, maybe you've got 100 dukes or 200 dukes uh, to control, and they each have a dozen or two dozen, you know, uh, viscounts or earls or whatever uh, down under them, and they're all uh, they're all pretty uh, uh, closely controlled from the top down. Uh, what happens when you break up these uh, these huge estates and uh, uh, empower younger sons? Um, what you end up with is instead of you know a couple hundred very powerful people. Uh, who are also incredibly dependent on you because although they do have a lot of wealth and power, they are hated and despised. Uh, and uh, if you uh, withdraw your support for them with the army, um, the, the standing army back in the capital, uh, they might be overrun uh, if all you know if all of their subjects rose up against them. Uh, whereas uh, once you once you have it down to here and you've got um, you've got little smallholders with a few hundred acres each. Uh, they are farming it by themselves. They don't depend on the labor of, uh, of slaves, um, and they're, they're pretty empowered on their own, and this is very much more difficult to control. This is why democracy um, um, shies away from concentrations of wealth uh, to the extent that we're seeing today. Usually what happens is eventually um, uh, uh, there's a, a massive redistribution of wealth uh, because it's, it's really dangerous for democracy to have so much power concentrated in so few hands. Um, the, the ideal is what America was built on, this uh, yeoman farmer, um, smallholders of, you know, 100 or 200 acres uh, worked on by the family, uh, uh, independent, economically independent, and able to make uh, their best decisions on their own. In any case, uh, that worked for feudal society, though, because it um, 
it, it had a system with tremendous violence and warfare uh, because uh, many of these people are fighting incessantly throughout, um, um, especially the early modern period when we get up to the 1600s. Uh, 1300s to the 1600s is a very, very violent time uh, in Europe. Um, and um, uh, a lot of these younger sons are working as mercenaries. Of course, they have horses, they have military training. You know, they were raised in the castle um, with uh, um, with uh, uh, all the education they needed um, uh, and, and uh, tastes of, of, of wealth and pleasure, uh, but they have no way to sustain it. So uh, they can join the army and go conquer. Uh, they can join the church and become clergy. Uh, they can uh, uh, buy up a, a, a business and, and have some sort of business enterprise, um, but there's there's um, uh, very little uh, open to them. So a lot of them are working as mercenaries, uh, and that's you know the knights of the round table, etc. Younger sons, uh, freeholders, peasants, and cotters. Uh, these are the the basically three kinds of, of of relationships to the land. Freeholders have more control over property. Um, these are uh, uh, the dukes and the, the earls and the, the other people who, who say, uh, I can dispose of this property, um, as I wish. Um, it, it, you know, I, I can, I can decide what's being planted where and when and how, um, the peasants merely have rights to some property, what we call, um, a, uh, 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 uh usufruct. I could write that in there. U-S-U-F-R-U-C-T, use of the fruit. Basically, uh, they don't have uh, the right to buy and sell the land or to transfer it or anything like that, but they do have the right to live in that little village and farm the lands of, around the village. Um, and from that farm, uh, they have a, a right to take a percentage for their own uh, uh, family consumption. Uh, whoever the Duke is, the Duke can't just kick them off the land. And that's wonderful security. Uh, and a lot of people didn't have that. A lot of people were, were cotters. That is merely labor. Uh, they have no um, uh, uh, guarantee of uh, income, guarantee of food. All they have is their labor, which they spend um, and get paid for. Uh, and it is my argument that that is what we are, usually in the classroom. Definitely, I am no more uh, than my labor. I have negative value when you when you count my total assets against my uh, student loans my student loans are bigger than my assets right now it was getting close uh but then we had the crash of uh, 2020 and uh so i'm uh, i'm underwater again and probably will be for 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 a while um it takes it takes a long time over the course of a lifetime to build enough wealth to be able to retire for most of us uh, some of us have property um uh, uh in this world uh, something like about maybe 15 percent of the of the american population has uh, significant uh, property but 85 percent um no no they don't have very much <clears throat> goodness i'm getting dry here and so the mercantilist roots of capitalism uh let us stop now i'm gonna go get something to drink and uh come back and work on this some more 1492